Okay, so drawing our site plan, we're gonna go into go into your site plan drawing, go to the massing and site tab. And the first thing we're gonna do is draw the property line. So that's its own special line type. And as you can see in this video, it's showing you um, how you just draw, you could either just draw the perimeter or you can use um, the, uh, can use the direction and bounds method. Um, we're just going to we're just going to draw a polyline to do it. Yeah. That's a good question. So where are you dimensioning in your site plan? You're going to dimension from your walls. So from the outer face of your exterior wall to the property line. So I, I would do the first floor existing walls. Well, then measure to your column. Yeah. So we're going to draw the property line. So it'll ask you which, which method you want to use. Uh, we're just going to create by sketching. So we're 50 feet wide and 135 feet long. So I'm not going to worry about where it is in relation to my house yet. I'm just going to draw it first and then we can move it. So for example, let's draw 50 feet. So whenever you want to draw something in Revit, you just click, move the cursor in that direction, type 50 feet, enter, come down, put it in the right direction, 135 feet, enter, 50 feet, and then click to close it. Then, so once you hit the green check, it's going to finish this sketch and turn it into uh, a line drawing. Now, there, when you click on each of these, there's dimension, there's blue dimensions that pop up, and it's actually dimensioning to the wall of the house. So you see, my roof overhang is actually coming out to here. But the wall of my house is actually in here. Um, so you can use those these blue dimensions later on if you want to change this to, to update that. So I'm going to hit the green check. If I want to create a distance, let's say this is where my wall is, I can hit DI for the, dis the aligned dimension shortcut. DI is the shortcut, and then click. And now when I click on my property line, I can move it. So if I know that this wall is five feet from my, my uh, property line, I click on the property line. This turns blue, meaning it's now parametric. Now I can click on it, type five feet, and it moves my property line so that this is five feet. So that's a, a good tool to use in Revit whenever you need to change the dimension of something accurately. What I like to do is just strike a dimension and then click on the object you want to move. This turns blue. You click on it, six feet. Now it's updated. Okay. And it's, it only turns blue when you click on the object you want to you want to move if it's tied to that dimension. So that's that's one method for, for moving accurately. So do that. Position your property line in relation to your house. Some of you guys may have it rotated. RO for rotate. You may have your property line oriented like this, or your house oriented this way. Um, either way works. Just make sure you don't move your house or rotate your house. That's forbidden. Okay, so we have a property line, bless you. We're gonna uh, create a topo surface. Now, again, this is that topo surface that I told you the surveyor will give us usually a three-dimensional CAD file. We import it into Revit. We take their 3D lines and we turn it into a mesh surface, three-dimensional surface. In our case, we're ju we just have a flat site, so I'm not gonna give it any um, elevation points. We're just going to give it 
four flat points at each corner. And the reason we're doing that is so that we can, we can when we do spot elevations, there's an actual surface that it's looking for to find. If we don't create this topo surface, we're not going to be able to take spot elevations on our site. We're not going to be able to reference the corners of the site. Yes. Check if you've hit in that category. You can go uh, turn on this light bulb if you've, you've hit in something. It's there. Um, right click and go to elements. I'll help you after, just because we're recording this right now. Um, so I'm going to go to topo surface. And so you can either do this one, you know, one of two ways. You can place a series of points. So I can go around and place points in every corner. Or if my surveyor has given me a CAD file, so this is a great diagram of it, showing the CAD file, I can import that into Revit, um, and it'll generate the surface for me. So if it's more accurate, if you're on a hill, or if you, you actually have topo lines that you need to include, that's the way to go. We're just going to use this place point method. So elevation zero, we're just going to keep everything flat at elevation zero. And I'm going to go around and hit every corner to enclose this. So just go clockwise. Again, keeping everything at zero. Just hit every corner. And you'll see that it just created a, a four-point surface. Then you hit the green check. And you won't see it. I mean, you can see the perimeter of it. So if I were to tab through this, when I put my mouse over the edge, it shows property line. If I hit tab, now I have a, it'll show the surface itself. If I want to go into a shaded view, it'll show my house is shaded and the ground is brown. Again, that's down here under visual style, shaded with edges. That's just to show you that you do have a site, uh, a topo surface now. Again, I don't want to, I don't want to print it in this view, so I'm going to go back to my hidden line. That's the default um, style. Hidden line is essentially black line work for the perimeter, and then white faces for everything you draw. That's hidden line. So. Okay, so I have my. I just created my topo surface. I created um, the property line. Site components, you can bring in trees based on their locations on your site. So click site component. All of these trees should show up. Um, you can just click and place these as needed. So if you have a three-dimensional building site, if you're building on a hill or if you have topography, this building pad tool is really useful. It'll take, um, it'll basically carve out the, the footprint of what you want to be flat out of that 3D surface. So that's a really useful tool. Parking, you can add parking spaces in this way. We don't, we, we're not gonna deal with either of those two things. If you had contours, th this will label them. So we talked about the incremental labeling of contours. Um, this, is, this is the way you would do it. So in this case, they're going in, in uh, yeah, so they're, they're labeling their to topo lines. Um, OK, so we have that. The next thing we're going to do we're going to we're going to annotate each corner. So we want to give this spot elevations at every corner. We're going to go to annotate. And you'll see that there's a couple options here. There's spot elevation and spot coordinate. Spot coordinate is their locations north, south, east and west. Spot elevation is its height above the benchmark. So we're going to hit spot elevation. 
And now that we've created um, a, a topo surface, notice when we mouse over it, it's giving us the reading for the spot elevation for that. If we mouse over our house, it's going to tell us the actual height above benchmark for our roof. So this is telling me that my roof is 11 feet 9 inches over my benchmark. My topography is 0 because it's it, we made the elevation 0 for everything. So what you're going to do is you're going to go into the corner, get as far close to the corner as you can while you have uh, the elevation getting called out. And you're just going to pull this out. So we have this at zero feet. So again, I go to the corner, click, click, and click. And it's telling me that this corner is at zero. If you had a site that was sloping, these would be different numbers. But for our purposes, it's all the same. It's all zero. So again, just left click, click. You can do it without a leader, actually. So uncheck leader, and then tell it what side. Actually, we probably do want. I do want a leader. I'll leave it up to you. Okay, so every corner should be labeled here. So go around every every corner, label it with spot elevations. Again, you're clicking three times for it to create the shoulder and the leader. Is everyone there? You want to show me? Um, are you doing spot elevation? If it's slightly different, we can we can update. We can come around and, and look later. Um, if okay, so under spot elevation, you can change the type of. Uh, you could do target, um, you can do dot leader. So that's all under properties here, if you want to change that. Yeah, do, do the dot leader. Crosshair would look like that. So yeah, if you want to change the style, you can click on it, go to properties, target, if you want to do that. OK, so you should have four spot elevations telling us their height above benchmark at each corner. Now we want to change the, right now if you look at this view, this looks like a solid line because it's seeing our topo surface. But now that we've drawn our um, the spot elevations for our corners, we don't need that topo surface anymore. So I can actually hide it. So if I, if I put my mouse over the edge, tab through, so I tab, click. Now that this whole thing is selected, I can right click it and say hide and view elements. And it'll hide that topo surface. So now you'll see the property line drawn correctly. Okay. Does everyone have that? So I first selected the surface. So again, I put my mouse over this. The first thing it wants me to click on is the property line. I don't want that. So I put my mouse over it, hit tab. It'll let me select the topo surface, and then I click. Then I right click, hide in view, elements, and it's gone. OK, so that's gone now. Now what we need to do is tag this, and it's going to tag the bearing and distance for each um, each property line here. 
Actually, let's do this. Does everyone in your site plan, do you see um, this project base point? Mm -hmm. Click on that. Set the angle to true north to be 45 degrees, depending on where how your project is oriented. If it's oriented like mine is, you're going to click on it and say uh, 45 degrees. Um, if you're... If your project is rotated so that your site is horizontal, um, you're going to be, and so instead of 45 degrees to north, um, it would actually be I think 135 to north. So now when you go in and you tag by, so now we have our property line. You're going to, under annotate, you're going to go to tag by category. And then just mouse over the property line. And in your case, it's not going to do this yet. You, you're going to try to click, and it'll say um, a property line tag isn't loaded yet into your project. And then just hit uh, load family. And you're going to have to load the property line tag into your project. So for example, if I were to go insert load family where is it um, these are detail items annotations Yeah, so if you go under U.S. Imperial, Annotations, Civil, you'll see Property Line Tag. It just says Property Line Tag. That's what you're going to load in. So click that, hit Open, and it'll load it into your project. So now we can do this, and I want to get rid of this leader, so I'm going to do this again for you guys. So under annotate, went to tag by category. And now whatever you mouse over, it's going to try to tag. So in our case, we just we only care about the property line tag. When you mouse over it, notice that leader is showing up, the line. We don't we don't really want that. So I'm going to uncheck leader. So now when it draws it, it's going to put it right on the property line. And notice that this is south 45 degrees. So it knows that because we typed in true north is actually 45 degrees. It's going to update that in my um, bearings here. So now I can mouse over every property line and it's going to give me a bearing and distance for each one using that um, property line tag that we just loaded. And I hit escape when I'm done. Now you should have bearings and distances for each property line. Did anyone else's um, uh, elevate, spot elevations disappear in their corners? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not sure why that happened. Yeah, but then I tried turning it back on. Let me see. Okay, yeah, it's because we turned that off. Um,
Another way to, to do this is to change the visibility graphics of that uh, site because we want these spot elevations. We don't necessarily want the, uh, the topo surface. So we can go to visibility graphics, VV. If we go under, if we find it there under site, um, If we set landscape lines to be a color of white, that might work. Let's see. No. Yeah, we'll have to play with that a little bit. I'll let you guys know when we solve that. So then from here, you can go in and take dimensions from your site, your model, to the existing garage. So if you haven't modeled your garage or existing house, go ahead and do that. Um, it doesn't have to be the most detailed model, but just show the massing of the, the site, get the walls accurate in terms of their location. If you have to go into Google Earth to take measurements, you can do that. We, um, I'll let you do it with detail lines, yeah. Um, I would recommend modeling it because it'll give you a reference for height. It'll just be actually easier if you model it. Um, but you can do it either way. So DI is the shortcut for dimension. And then just go ahead and dimension every, di every direction from your property. And so on our, on our project, we're going to write new construction. So you can just use the text tool. Just type all caps, new construction. If you want to highlight our building, um, you, can use, you can use detail lines to do that. Just go to a, a wide line and then run that along the perimeter to give it a little bit more of an accent. Because we do want to differentiate our construction from the existing. So this is now new construction. We have a heavy line weight around it that I drew as a detail line. The existing houses, maybe you give them a hatch. Maybe you use a uh, fill region with a light line, thin line. Say this is the garage. We give it a hatch. Maybe it's just a diagonal cross hatch. We hit the green check. And so we can say existing, existing garage. We'll type that here. I wouldn't use this hatch, actually. I would maybe use just a diagonal line. So. Diagonal down, hit green check, do something like that. So you can do this, just do this hatch for both the garage and for the existing house. Make it lighter so that it shows up. Also show any paths that you have on the site. Remember in our site plan lecture, this is an exist this was from a previous project, but they're showing um, the path that you take to the, the ADU, the path to the garage, you can draw all this. You could just do it as detail lines. You could also do this as um, site, you know, site work if you want to actually go into the 3D version of Revit to do that, you can. But they're, they're calling out the main house, the garage, and the, the new ADU. Dimension from Notice here, he's dimensioning from the wall to property line. Okay, not the roof. Wall to existing house, wall to property line. He also could have done wall to garage. And then 
in the site itself, so on the street, you're going to label the street. So we're, we actually, this is a different site that you guys have, but you're going to write Walnut Street here, or Walnut Avenue, I don't remember. And then you can also draw the center line of the street. Revit has a center line uh, annotation that you can put here. So you can, it's a CL symbol that you can add. Go ahead and do that. Just try to be as descriptive as you can. Um, yeah, so this is what I'm looking for. Add a, add a um, scale, a graphic scale. Always have a north arrow so we know which way is north. And a, a sheet title. So this is going to be both classwork and homework. I realize this is a lot to take on. So um, we're going to have this due on Tuesday when you guys get in. So you're going to upload, you're going to put it on a sheet. So again, always put it on a 30 by 42 sheet from here on out. Put it on a sheet, print it as a PDF, and then upload it to Canvas for Tuesday. All right? Yeah, I'm going to upload the sample ADU as well.